Hello, my name is Johan Falk. This is a screencast series, a video series where I'm going to introduce Drupal. In the first few episodes I'm going to talk about Drupal from a perspective, comparing it to other CMSs and, and, and uh, telling you what you can do with Drupal, how Drupal works in general. And then we're going to have a look at how to actually use Drupal and, and build a site and things like that. This first episode I'm going to talk about Drupal, well, why, to why you want to have Drupal, why you want to choose Drupal, compared to uh, some, some other uh, options uh, that are available, things like that. So, if you come this far and watch, uh, are watching this video, then you probably know that Drupal is a content management system. And uh, that is a tool that you use for putting content on the web and then managing that content in one way or another. Uh, also, if you're uh, looking at Drupal from, from this perspective, you're probably comparing Drupal to other platforms as well. And if you do that, you sometimes end up on this site that's called CMS Matrix. It's, uh, they say they have great data and ugly sites, and you can see here their description of Drupal. has a lot of yes and no and free add-on and, and things, uh, stamps like that, uh, giving you the feel of describing Drupal in a very concise way. Unfortunately, this is not really describing Drupal in a concise way because uh, it's not really interesting to see if you have like LDAP authentication as a free add-on. It's more interesting to, to know how that add-on works and how that uh, feature works with other features that you want to have and things like that. So this might be a good site, but uh, I wouldn't spend too much time on that. Another approach you can do is to actually click around and try a CMS or two. One place to do that is the open source CMS uh, site, opensourcecms.com, uh, where you can uh, try out a really large number of CMSs that get reinstalled every once in a while. This is the Drupal page here, and it will be, well, their Drupal installation will be reinstalled in one and a half hour or so. Um, if you do want to click around and use Drupal in particular, however, I recommend this site instead. It's called Drupal Gardens. Uh, it's a really big site or actually a portal or something uh, where you can create your own site. Uh, it's hosted by a company called Acquia, being the largest Drupal company on the planet. Uh, nice guys and girls. And makes it easy to get up and running with Drupal. It's not the... the uh, well, the, the Drupal that you get from Drupal Gardens is kind of modified and they have some extra stuff and things with it. Uh, so you don't get that, uh, you don't expect to get that if you uh, download what's called Drupal Core later on. But it's a good way to, to get uh, a nice feel for what Drupal is. Yes. However, if you're evaluating Drupal and, and con um, considering uh, starting to use Drupal, then you probably are more interested in knowing what kind of sites can be built with Drupal. And a good way to know that is to uh, look at sites that are already built. And it's actually the case that Drupal powers about 2% of the sites on the web, which is uh, really much. And WordPress, one of the larger well, competitors, I wouldn't say, but alternatives to Drupal, it has like 9%, so that's that's more than Drupal. WordPress is generally described as, as a good option if you have a simpler site with not that many, not that much functionality, while Drupal is a more of an enterprise system where you build complex sites, sites like intranets and, and, I don't know, newspaper sites and things like that. Um, uh, the vast majority of sites built on Drupal are like personal blogs or uh, sites for churches or small organizations and things. But there are also some quite big uh, sites built on Drupal. I'm going to show you a few of these. Uh, this is a blog that is pretty good if you want to have uh, examples of, of Drupal sites. It's uh, uh, called Boitart.net, well, run by Dries Boitart, the, the founder of the Drupal project. Uh, he has a number of, well, he, he collects Drupal sites that, that are a good example of big uh, flashy Drupal sites. And I selected just a few of these. One of them is this uh, uh, development site for Twitter. Uh, Twitter is a pretty cool uh, web service and this is the site that their developers use to communicate with with themselves and with other people 
uh, working with Twitter from a development perspective. It's driven by Drupal and that's pretty nice. As you can see I have this little icon here saying that this is driven by Drupal. That's a service I have, well, an, an extra thing I have on my web browser. Uh, I'm from Sweden and uh, being from Sweden um, I of course want to mention that IKEA is using Drupal as well. That's pretty nice. Uh, they have a nice site here. Um, yeah, uh, one of the best news magazines in the world, according to me, is The Economist. Um, it's uh, well, they're using Drupal as well. Uh, they did a pretty cool migration from a really large, well, having a really large site and a custom built uh, homegrown system and managing their content uh, into Drupal, and it seems they're really happy with it. So that's nice. Another cool website I want to mention is, of course, the whitehouse.gov website using Drupal. And here again, you can see this Drupal icon up here. That's nice. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's some sites using Drupal. You can use Drupal for most any kind of sites like intranets, like uh, magazines, like uh, personal sites, like calendars, like booking systems, like I don't know, basically anything. Um, yes, uh, talking a bit more general about Drupal and uh, good and bad stuff, um, there are some advantages uh, to using Drupal that are often mentioned. Here's some uh, blog post on Digit. Um, they mention a few things. I want to mention in particular uh, the flexibility of Drupal as a framework. Uh, you can build most any kind of site you want to have and make it work the way you want. You can have it interact with uh, your other uh, IT systems without any problems. Uh, you can uh, customize, add stuff later on and things like that. Drupal is really flexible. And number two, uh, it's uh, the Drupal community is great. Drupal is created and maintained by a very large community which I will talk about in a separate video and uh, that community is really extraordinary. Drupal is growing. It's, it's growing like crazy. Uh, it's difficult to describe how much Drupal is growing but there are many hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of people uh, engaged in the Drupal project over the world. Um, yes, they also mentioned that Drupal is open source uh, which I will talk about in a separate video. Drupal is open source and that's really good. It doesn't mean that it's it's uh, free of charge uh, the, uh, to, to get a Drupal site. It can be but definitely doesn't have to be. Uh, here's a Drupal features. This is part of the flexibility thing. Um, yeah, so that's good stuff about Drupal. What's bad about Drupal then? Here's the Wikipedia site, Wikipedia page for Drupal. And if we scroll down to the criticism section, uh, they have four bullets here uh, that are pretty valid uh, criticisms about Drupal. Number one being usability. Drupal has been uh, over the years developed by geeks and, and really good geeks when it comes to doing technology, but they're not very good. Well, uh, traditionally they haven't been very good when it comes to usability. Uh, the latest version of Drupal uh, number 7 is very much better than Drupal 6 when it comes to usability, which in turn was very much better than Drupal 5. Uh, but there is still some, some things that uh, can be polished. Um, so, uh, out of the box, uh, Drupal doesn't have perfect usability, though it's pretty nice, as you will see in, in later screencasts. The learning curve for Drupal is uh, pretty... Uh, well, difficult to tackle. I, I say that Drupal has a plateau learning curve, which means that you can work uh, for quite long without learning and then you hit a wall and you have to climb up uh, on that wall before you can move on uh, further. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, third bullet here, backward comp compatibility. Uh, every time Drupal releases a new major version, uh, there are also upgrade paths to, to get all the content from the previous Drupal core version into, into the new Drupal core version, which is very good. However, there is no such backward comp 
compatibility when it comes to add-on modules and, and uh, added functionality. So oftentimes uh, modules, that is uh, add-on functionality, needs to be rewritten from scratch and that takes quite some time before all the modules has, uh, has been updated to the new main version of Drupal. Uh, new Drupal versions are released maybe every second year or so. I will talk more about that in a, in a, a future screencast. Uh, fourth bullet here, performance and scalability, is I think not valid. Um, uh, as it says here, uh, Drupal performs like other systems of this complexity. Um, if, if you have a special purpose uh, system, you can make it perform better. Um, but, but Drupal is not a special purpose uh, tool. It's a general purpose tool, so, so that's it. And what's important when you use Drupal or any, any tool of that size is that you can use caching and, and other uh, performance improvement uh, techniques. And you can with Drupal, and that's nice. Yeah, so uh, that's it. I've been talking about Drupal, and as we'll see in the upcoming screencast after the two next ones, I think, when we start using Drupal, we'll see that Drupal isn't actually a, a CMS, a content management system. Drupal is a tool for building your own customized uh, content management system. Building on the uh, stuff that Drupal provides you and contribute and modules uh, gives to you, uh, you can uh, create your own content management system built on standard components but fulfilling your needs in the way you want. And um, yeah, that's it for this uh, screencast. I'll see you in another one. Goodbye.